My name is Rachel and I'm the mother of Hirsch Goldberg Polin, who is a dual American Israeli civilian who was stolen after having his dominant arm blown off on October 7th from the Nova Music Festival in Israel. We have just come out of a very productive meeting with Vice President Harris, who carved out time to meet with us hostage families. We're very grateful for that. We discussed a lot of different things, and one of the things we talked about is that there is a possibility of holding two truths. You can believe, as we do, that it is horrible that innocent civilians in Gaza are suffering, and at the same time, you can also know that it is horrible and against international law for hostages to be held against their will. We are six months in on day 186. Of course, today, standing in front of the White House, we are thinking of all 133 souls who are being held there, particularly the eight American civilians being held there, as well as people who we don't hear about. We don't hear a lot about the eight Muslim Arabs who are being held hostage also in that cohort of 133. You don't hear a lot about the seven Thai Buddhists who are being held there among the 133. You don't hear a lot about the two black African Christian young men being held there in that 133. You don't hear about the Nepalese, about the Mexicans, about the Argentinians, about the French. There are 133 cherished souls who are being held there and it is time we don't want any more progress we want results and we are so grateful and thankful to the american administration and congress for all of the support but we need results we need our people home ma'am a couple of, may I ask a couple of questions please yeah, yeah, a moment. Sir. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for, for being here. My name is Jonathan Dekelchen. I'm the father of Sagi, a 35-year-old, now father of three. His third daughter was born in mid-December. Um, Sagi is from Kibbutz near Oz, which is my home as well, which was completely destroyed on October 7th. Sagi does not know, as the rest of the hostages do not know, what became of their families um, or what is happening around them. We all are here, for, for not the first time, to work together with the Biden administration to do everything that we can and encourage all parties to reach a deal that will result in our loved ones coming home. Not only that, by doing so, the horror, the horror that the civilians of Gaza have been, experienced, have been experiencing for the last six months can come to an end. There is hope for people on both sides of the border only after the hostages come home. In the meetings that we've had here for the last couple of days, both in the White House and elsewhere with administration officials, what we have heard is that there is a deal on the table right now that all of the parties agree to and are willing to work with. We are waiting now and the world waits for Hamas to get to yes. It is in their court there is no reason not to move forward on this deal. All of the intermediaries are in favor, and we, all of us, will see shortly if Hamas cares enough about its own people, its own people, to say nothing of our loved ones, to move towards de-escalation, to returning life to everyone in and around Gaza. It's clear to us that the Biden administration and wall to wall in Congress, there is absolute, absolute support for getting all of the hostages home. Those who were alive and those who've been murdered, those on October 7th and those who subsequently died in Hamas custody. That is absolutely clear. We are completely appreciative. We know the privilege that we have as U.S. citizens. And we also know, we've been told and we see that the administration will continue to work as hard as it can until all of the hostages are home. Thank we are, you. We are coming up to, we are coming up to Passover.
One message we'd like, we are coming up to Passover, one message we have, let our people go. Let our people go after six months. Your name is Sir, Sir, can we do something in Hebrew, please? Ruby Chen, father of Vitai Chen, deceased, that was killed on October 7th. Amen, maybe something in Hebrew? יצאנו מפגישה, יצאנו מפגישה עם סגנית הנשיא, הודינו לה ולאדמיניסטרציה, לנשיא ביידן, על העבודה הקשה שהם עושים במטרה להוציא את היקרים שלנו, אבל אנחנו לא מסתפקים בתהליך, אנחנו רוצים לראות תוצאות, ואנחנו דורשים שכל הצדדים שמעורבים פה ישימו להם את הלחצים הכי גדולים כדי להביא את חמאס להגיד כן, ואם לא, לבוא עם תוכנית שתביא את הילדים שלנו חזרה. אין זמן, חצי שנה זה המון זמן. הם נמקים שם, אנחנו צריכים אותם בבית. תודה. We're not here to discuss uh, war plans. Um, that is something that, for, for our, for our point, from our point of view, is something that is for the Israeli government to decide. What we know, and we've been saying from the beginning, that whatever Israel does should not cause sacrifice a second time around of the hostages. The hostages must come out first, whatever it takes, with the involvement of all parties. Um, whether or not Israel continues its campaign, certainly beyond our power, what we do know is that any, any hope for peace, and Israel has been clear about this, the only hope for peace is through the release of all the hostages now. And do you believe Hamas has any real intention of cutting a hostage deal? We'll see very shortly. There is a very, there's a legitimate hostage deal on the table right now. It is completely in Hamas's court, and we will know shortly. We hope within days, if not hours. Can you talk about how your meeting with the vice what? president came about? Did she invite you? Did you ask to with her? I'd just like to follow up on that. We are demanding from the international community, all the partners that are working on this deal, Qatar, Egypt, and others, to put maximum pressure to get Hamas to say yes. Have you met with President Biden yet? Do you expect to? Not, not this. Not, not this. Not if not we this can time. get, we appreciate you guys making time to speak with us. Certainly, under these Fair circumstances, much. it's it's crushing to see the 186 days on each of your chests right now. Can you give us a sense for those who are paying attention? And I know there's a fear in this community that the world moves on from these hostages and it worries about other topics. What worries you most, and where do you find your hope? What gives you faith and hope? So I want to say that one thing that worries us is that over the last few weeks, it seems that there is a narrative spreading to de-link hostage release from de-escalation of the military actions. And I don't believe that that is possible. I don't believe that the Israeli government will agree to that. These two things must be linked. No conversation about the region should be had without it starting with 133 hostages must come home. In terms of hope, in terms of hope to the second part of your question, I know one thing that gives us hope is we have no choice but to stay hopeful. And the second thing is we have felt tremendous support from people around the world, all religions, all over the world, sending messages of support. And that strengthens us to know that we're not alone, not as individuals, not as a family, not as hostage families, but there are people, decent, good human beings around the world who for the sake of humanity are supporting us and calling for the safe return of our hostages. My name is John Polin. I am Hirsch Goldberg Polin's father and Rachel's husband. I think that's all the time. Thank you guys. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. We hope the best for you. Thank you.